Hey, I'm Dave, and I'm here with Zach from Inventables, and we're going to talk about 3D printing and 3D carving. All right, Zach, well, thanks for coming out, man. Thanks uh, for having me. We, we wanted to just kind of let everybody know what 3D printing was, what 3D carving was, how they work together, maybe benefits and, and risks to uh, both of those processes. Um, so, stoked to have you here for a conversation. Awesome to be here. Nice. Um, so I guess we'll start with uh, what our, our community might know best, 3D printing. Um, in terms of like defining it, it is, as, as I describe it, it's like a hot glue gun like controlled by a mechatronic system. So you take a digital file and then it takes, you know, we do this additive manufacturing where uh, you lay down, in, in most cases for the FFF uh, materials or machines, adds plastic down and continuously builds those layers to make that digital file turn into something like very real. Uh, what is, like how would you define 3D carving? Yeah, so pretty much the opposite. So if that's an additive process, 3D carving is a subtractive process. You mm -hmm. start with a block of material, like a piece of wood or plastic, and then the bit goes around and carves out your design that you design on the computer until you're only left with your part. Awesome. Same, same way to make something, uh, starting with a digital file, ending up with something real. There's a different method of getting there. Exactly. That's awesome. So what's the difference between 3D carving, which you guys have defined kind of as, as its own little thing, versus CNC milling? Sure. So, well, CNC as a category includes, it, it's computer numerical control. So yes. basically the computer is controlling a machine by the numbers, you could yeah. say. Well, the language is, uh, you know, G-code, essentially. G-code. Right? And so, yeah, the 3D printers are using G-code. Uh, 3D carvers using G-code. Cool. A lot of laser cutters use G-code. Yep. Um, so really, all of these tools are CNC's. The, the term came from back in the uh, late 1940s mm -hmm. when they were making, uh, this guy John T. Parsons was making blades for airplanes for the war. <laughs> yeah. And they were trying to figure out, can they do it? At right. that time, it wasn't even a computer. It was one of those cardomatic machines. Mm -hmm. And they actually first called it cardomatic uh, <laughs> milling as opposed to CNC. Yeah, then yeah. once computers came out with the IBM mainframes, they changed it to CNC. Okay, cool. But the reason that like the milling type machines or the carving type machines got caught with that uh, moniker was that was the only type of machine that they had. It was the only thing that existed, yeah. Back then, they didn't have 3D printers. Yeah. And so at, over time, as some of these new tools came out, we, we were thinking about it, and really a better description would be a 3D carver. Right. And especially as people were yeah. coming up to us at trade shows and saying like, hey, is this a 3D printer? Yeah. We were like, well, not really. Yeah. Uh, but it's got it's got like such the same roots. So it's exactly when I talk about a glue gun controlled by a little mechatronic system, the language for which this is being controlled is G code. This is the same thing, except the hot glue gun is replaced by a spinning tool. Yes, exactly. And so um, we started calling them 3D carvers to make it easier for people mm -hmm. who are familiar with 3D printing to understand. Yeah. And then started thinking about it in the more of a broad context. So you've got lasers, you've got printers, now you've got carvers. Yeah. It makes more sense. So it actually pairs, the name pairs more well with 3D printers because that kind of is almost the root of it. 3D printer is adding, 3D carving is whittling, essentially, that whatever the material is away. That's really awesome. That's which, a good story. What's also changed over time is with the invention of easel. So we've taken what mm -hmm. used to be three pieces of software, CAD, CAM, and machine control yep. software, put them all into one and made it so you can have a more print-like yeah. experience yeah. than a traditional uh, manufacturing center. Yeah, that's really great. And for those of you who don't know, Easel is the software that comes with your Carvey or even your X-Carve. It's amongst the easiest pieces of software across any platform that I've personally used. <laughs> well, thank uh, you. And I'm a SolidWorks guy, so SolidWorks export to SDLs and all these other things, then figuring out slicing engines. Uh, matter control is pretty easy easy to use for 3D printing, as is Cura and some of the other open source ones. But Easel, in terms of getting started with a Carvey from day one, it's you guys have done a really great job. Thanks. One of our goals for the Easel project and the Carvey project was to help you, from the time you open the box, be carving within mm -hmm. five minutes. Cool. Yeah. And initially, people in our company were like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but it, it, it took like two years to get to the point where you could actually open the machine and start carving. Software development's hard. Yeah. <laughs> And so, but yeah, we're there. It's it's pretty exciting. This That's year, awesome. there'll be uh, over a million carves that wow. goes through easel. Wow. That's very impressive. 3D printing has its own, uh, let's call it, frustrations, when you're, especially when you're getting started. 
um, you know, hot ends can jam. You got to make sure that the bed is level. And these are things not to scare people, but to just be known. If you're if you're 3D printing and on a regular basis, you've certainly cleared a jammed hot end. You've certainly had to mechanically level some bed, and you've certainly had to dial in your print settings. So I'd say those are the big like three things that you must become accustomed to to succeed at 3D printing. And there's many companies that are are making it much easier and 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 things that you don't have to worry about those. But with carving, what are those big risks like? Uh, people that are just getting into it. What are the things that you got to like, the two or three things that you got to know, um, and you guys have great guidance for setting up your machine itself, but what are some of the troubles that, that one might run into? Yeah, so a lot of it depends on what machine you're using, right? right. Because like you're saying with printing over time, companies are making mm -hmm. it easier and easier. Mm -hmm. So in Inventables, we have sort of two product lines. One is the X-Carve, yep. which is set up more like a traditional... Bigger platform, a little bit of an open gantry system. Yeah, and so it's it's more like a traditional machine. Yep. Where Carvey, we, we've really designed it for schools and libraries. Cool. Where the expectation is you, you might have never carved before, and you're just getting into this. So like on the X-Carve, you have to learn about like zeroing your material. Yep. Figuring out like where is Z0 on yeah. the material, where is Z0 on <laughs> where the Where are we going to not drill into my table? Yeah. <laughs> And so we have things like homing switches and Z-probes, yep. and, and you can calibrate that all yourself. That's great if you're into that. Yep. If you just want to have a, a print-like experience where you click the carve button and it goes, that would... More of a plug-and-play option with the Carvey. Yeah, so Carvey, we, we've designed the smart clamp, and yes. uh, it has like a, a little button on it. So you when you clamp your material in, it's always clamped in the corner, Yep. and then the bit will come over and touch the top. Cool. And so... We think of 3D carving as like a journey or like a maker journey. Mm -hmm. So easel and carvey sort of can get you going on the journey yeah. with within five minutes. Like you don't need yeah. to spend time learning about that stuff. But, you know, as you build up your skills and you want to move into something like an X-carve, start tackling things like zeroing and... Bigger systems, maybe a more, power, more powerful spindle. Yeah, like the, the spindle on the carvey is 300 watts. Mm -hmm. Where the spindle on the uh, X carve is a Dewalt 611, which is a horsepower and a quarter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're you're playing yeah. with different technology yeah. there. Yeah, I mean the the X carve we've even just downstairs here uh, like successfully done aluminum, super easy. You gotta you gotta go go low and slow like like maybe three D printing some exotic materials. You gotta learn how to how to do that, but it rips through aluminum super easy. Yeah. So one of the one of the um, challenges or things to yeah. learn is about bits. Mm -hmm. How do you choose what bit to use for what material? And we actually, uh, I think it was last week, the week before we launched uh, Carving Bits 101, yeah. He's a live course. Yep, saw that. Um, so you can watch it, I think it's like 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. And we just sort of step through each bit, how you would know when to use it. Um, and it's, uh, the bits are like material based or speed based, like what's, what, very briefly, um, like what are, what are the bit choices that we have? Yeah, so there, there's, Lots of bit choices, but what we've done with um, Easel and the Amendables bit selection yep. is we've, we've color-coded them, and we've done the testing. Okay. Yep. So if you're using one of the color-coded bits on a Carvey, we've, we've basically tested every speed possible nice. to figure out where's that Goldilocks zone. Yep. Not too fast, not too yep. slow. Um, so you're going to get a nice cut, but also not break your bit. Awesome. And so if, when you go in Easel and select the material type that you have and the bit that you have... Cool it will automatically calculate that for you. Nice, so it does automate all the automated stuff. And I love that those bits like literally come with rings of colors, so you can't confuse them and all those things. That's yeah, really great. but that's also an opportunity or a challenge to learn, like, mm -hmm. okay, so you wanna move into mm -hmm. a new machine and you wanna buy your own bit. Yep. How do you figure out what um, speed what? and yeah. how fast to go? We let you click uh, custom. Right. So you are now going outside of the comfort zone. You've gone to McMaster Car. You've picked out some bit for yourself. You're trying to cut some material that's never been tested. And, and that stuff happens in 3D printing too. Someone will get some like polypropylene material and you got to make it stick to the bed. You're kind of in the wild, wild west when you're, when you're experimenting with materials. So. Yeah. And we encourage that. You know, Absolutely. It, yeah. get, get outside of the, the lines. We're not yeah. trying to lock you down with the colored bits. Like, yeah. go ahead, <laughs> but just know that you're going to need yeah. some testing. Yeah, you it might take one or two tries. Yeah. Awesome. So the Carvey seems like it's something that's super easy to jump into. And you guys even have kits. So we use this kit to make the uh, Matter Hackers inlay cheese board. Yeah. That comes with everything. So it sounds like 
when you're talking about Carvey as a product being more of a plug and play and succeed at specific projects, yeah, I love that as a goal. How did you guys get there? Yeah, so we, we didn't think about, okay, we're going to launch this machine as a product. We mm-hmm. thought about what's everything you need to have success. So we, even, we, we call our customer service team the customer success team. Yeah. So you need more than just a machine. You need the software. Yep. So that's what we did easel. You need the materials. Yep. You need maybe like the projects or the instructions. Yep. You need the finishing kit to like do a little sanding, a little wood oil. And so um, we put together a lot of kits. And I actually have a book coming out called Getting Started with 3D Carving. Awesome. It has five uh, projects that have step-by-step instructions. Cool. And we have a kit, or actually two kits, one with the materials and one with the finishing stuff. Okay. That great. you can buy, and then it has everything you need. Nice. In addition... Um, you know, it's not just about doing it by yourself. We mm-hmm. have these things called maker challenges right. where you can submit your design that you did with the kit and see how everybody else did it. Mm-hmm. So, for example, like on the cutting board, you, I saw you guys did the Matter Hackers logo. Yep. But you could do any logo you want. Infinite is possible. <laughs> and so we tried to think about the projects in a way that give people the opportunity to exercise their creativity cool. but still have a success. Yeah, that's great. And it seems like as a bundle... Um, when we talk about the risks of getting started, you guys have mitigated a lot of that by finding where 000 is using the smart clamp system, having these bundles that are ready to go, predefining the bits to be able to use those. And honestly, like a, a carver next to a 3D printer, like that, that makes an awesome little workshop in anybody's office, in anybody's studio, in anybody's apartment garage i love it they're like you can make anything now yeah so I, i've been uh, traveling around going to customers and i more and more i'm yeah. seeing them with like a bunch of these machines yeah. all next to each yeah. other and it's like wow this is pretty cool yeah so people with the carving 3d carving machines are getting 3d printers and vice versa it's people with 3d printing machines and capabilities are like oh well i could then do inlays and in wood things like that that you can't do with 3d printing itself yeah so that's a, one of the the things is like obviously you walk into any shop nobody has one tool Right. Like these things aren't microwaves. You got like yeah. a whole, even you guys, you well, got any, any, tools. any shop themselves, you know, like, uh, you've got, if you've got woodworking tools themselves, you've got a chop saw, you've got some hand saws, you've got a table saw, you've got a planer, you've got all these tools. They just, you just keep expanding on tools and capabilities. Exactly. So one of the cool things about 3d carving is it expands the amount of materials that you can work yep. with. So if you've been working with PLA or ABS yep. with 3d printers, maybe you've done some nylon or, yep. uh, some of the Ninja flex where yeah. you could stretch it. Now you can move into things like wood or aluminum. There's uh, two-color HDPE, so they've got these materials where it looks like an Oreo cookie. A little sandwich. Like a little sandwich. Uh, You can do acrylic. Mm -hmm. Um, There's mirrored acrylic. And in Inventables, we have a warehouse. We must have like a thousand different materials, but (laughs) we've got about 150 different types of acrylic. Yeah, that's really awesome. Glitters, mirrors, marbles. Yeah, and when you sit, even like engraving acrylic and then sending light through it does really awesome stuff. Yeah, light pipes. And so now you can start to integrate all of your stuff from like uh, Adafruit and Sparkfront, yeah. where you're doing electronics, but you're making yep. cases, or you're making light pipes. Yep. It starts to get interesting. Yeah, these things, these bundles come in to make projects that are even cooler than you could have done with one tool. You got a bunch of different tools. Yeah. That's great. So we're pretty excited about that part of it as more yeah. and more people are getting yeah. uh, involved. Well, we're excited as a 3D printing base to bring in the 3D carving, which we started a year and a half ago. So it's a, it's a really awesome story. Cool. cool. Well, thanks for coming out, Zach. We really appreciate it. Um, I think we were able to define what 3D printing versus 3D carving was yeah. and maybe the capabilities of each of these things. If anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to Matter Hackers or Inventables, Zach himself. But thanks for coming, man. All right, I really thanks appreciate it. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.